Oh. Um, just the very top there, this says the greatest common factor, which for any expression, you should always try to take that out in front before you try to do any other type of factoring. Um, greatest common factor, just biggest number, and or it could also include a variable that would go into each term of your expression. So that's what we're just going to do in the first example. Okay, so I'm going to scoot this up just a little bit. Okay, so we're going to look at the terms. So my first expression says 15x squared plus 25x. Can anybody tell me the biggest number and or variable that would divide into each of those? Five. Anything else? Do they have anything else in common besides five? Thanks. Yes, perfect. Okay, so what we would call your greatest common factor, sometimes people call that a GCF, this would be 5x. Now, what we're going to do, essentially, and you don't have to write this out. Some people can kind of just do this in their head. But what you're doing is like undoing a distributive property, basically. So I'm going to divide both of these terms by 5x. And when I do that, I'm going to pull that out in front, and we're going to have a set of parentheses. Okay, so just 15 divided by 5 is 3 x divided by x, we're basically have x squared, so I'm going to take 1 out, so there would be 1 left, so it would be 3x. 25 divided by 5 is 5, and I'm just going to keep a plus sign in between, there's nothing that's going to change that there. x divided by x would be 1, so that term would just be 5, and that would be what we call the factor form. If you multiplied that back out, it would give you the original problem, um, but we're trying to put it in a factored form because when we do this, um, later in the unit, that's going to help you solve a question that's uh, quadratic much quicker. Okay, so let's look at the next one. If I have 28m squared plus 8m, can you tell me the biggest number and or variable that would go into both of those? Okay, so 4m. Okay, so if I divide that and take that out in front, what would you have left over? 7m plus 2. Perfect. Okay. What about 6x minus 3? What could I remove from those two terms? Yeah. Okay, no x, right? Because it's just a plain 3. But both of those numbers are divisible by 3. So we're just going to divide by 3. Just take that out in front. Okay, what would be left over? If I divided that. 2x minus 1. Perfect, 2x. Just be real careful with that. Sometimes I, people will forget, but if I take that negative 3 divided by 3, that just becomes subtracted, so it's negative 1 there. Don't just put 2x. Some people will do that on accident, but there's a second term there, so there should be a second term in your little set of parentheses. Okay, what about 63x minus 27? 9. What would be left? Perfect, 7x minus 3. Is anybody having a question? Okay, before we do the next problem, I'm just going to give you a recommendation. So this one is not written in what we would call standard form. So it says 7y minus 9y squared. What I would recommend before you try to factor this, put it in standard form. That just means that the term with the biggest power of your variable is going to be written first. So I'm just going to switch these around. Negative 9y I'm going to write first. That 7y is, there's nothing in front of it, so that should just be considered 7y, so it would be a plus. Okay, so that's called standard form. Now, the other thing I would recommend in the parentheses, um, I want my first term to be positive in the parentheses. It'll just make everything you do so much easier if you keep to that. So what I would actually factor out here would be kind of weird. These numbers don't have anything in common, right? Bless you. What can I pull out of, or can I pull anything out of these terms? Y. Okay, the only thing I'm going to recommend, pull this out as a negative Y. All right, when you do that, it's literally just like a negative 1 and a y also. But what it'll do, it'll change the signs. So that first term will be positive when I look at this. So inside leftover, it would become positive 9, and it'll still have a y there. Now, the seven, the two y's will cancel, but this will make this a negative 7. And I just promise, if you're doing any kind of factoring, if you pull out a greatest common factor, whatever's left, you want that first term to be positive. It'll make problems easier to do down the line. Okay. 
What about 5x cubed and x? What could you take out there? Yeah. X. Okay. What would be left if you took out an x? Good. 5x squared plus 1. If you divide this by x, you have three of them. You're taking one out, so you'd have two left. And x divided by x, that's kind of a similar one to one of the ones above there. That would become 1. All right, and then I got one more, and then we'll get into my favorite kind of factoring. Okay, so again, for this last one, I would totally recommend, I'm just going to rewrite this in standard form. So I'm just going to put the highest power of my variable, it's x here first. That term is negative 6x to the fourth, and then minus 16x squared. All right, and if I'm keeping in mind, <clears throat> I want to have my first term be positive in the parentheses. What could you factor out of those two? Yes, okay, so we're going to pull negative 2x squared out in front. So just think about, it's literally, we're just dividing both of these terms by negative 2x squared, undoing a distributive property. What would you have left? 2x squared plus 8. Perfect, 3x squared, and then it would just be plus 8. Is anybody having a question? Okay, now. The rest of what we're going to do today, except for the last example, is going to factor a quadratic trinomial. All right, so just in general, these are going to be in the format like our standard form of a quadratic that we were graphing. I'm just not going to have an equal sign. It's just ax squared plus bx plus c. Okay, now every single one of the problems today, with the exception of the very last problem, the a value is going to be 1. But I want to show you this method just in case you were just told to do like trial and error and FOIL. We're not going to do that. All right, so if you can identify the A, B, and C values, you're going to take, these will just be numbers that won't include the variable. Whatever A times C is, today it's just going to be 1 times your plain number for every question. And I want to multiply those two numbers. I want to find two numbers that will multiply to give me that value. And I want the two numbers that I multiply to get whatever that product is to add up to the B value. Okay, if you can do that, I'm going to write here if A is equal to 1. The format will always set up, you'll have two sets of parentheses. They'll both start with an X. And then the two numbers, and there will only be two that fit both of these requirements, you'll just use those to fill the factors in, and then you'll have the factored form. Okay, so I kind of separated these out a little bit just to kind of give you guys a heads up. So the first expressions here in example two. Let me slide this up a little bit. Oh, actually, let me back up one second. Do you guys know what the word trinomial means? Okay, so this just means three, right? Try like a tricycle has three wheels. Okay, this means specifically three terms. So like the ax squared is a term, the bx is a term, the c is a term. So when I say trinomial, it just means it has three terms. Okay, sorry about that. Now, what I have in the first case, basically this says A is 1, C is greater than 0, and B is greater than 0. That just means C and B are both positive. That just means there's plus signs between all the terms here. Okay, if that's the case, both your factors are going to be positive. Because I'm going to multiply to get a positive number, add to get a positive number. So the only way to do that is they both have to be positive numbers. All right, so I'm going to multiply A times C here. In this question, it would just be 1 times 24. And then I'm going to add to get the B value, which is going to be the 10. So can we think of two numbers? When I multiply these two numbers, they would give me 24, and if I added the same two numbers, I would get 10. Six and four. Six and four. Okay, everybody's very excited. All right. So, and you don't have to write this out. I'm just showing you. There's only two numbers that'll fit both. So, six times four is 24. Six plus four is 10. All right. All you got to do to write your factor, just one of them's a plus six, and one of them's a plus four. That is the factored form. You have the standard form in the question. This is the factored form. Now, for this one only, you don't have to do this. I just want to foil it back out and show you why this works. So if I multiply x times x, right, that gives me back the x squared. 
x times 4 is 4x. Then I would do 6 times x, which would give me 6x. 6 times 4 is 24. This is why you want to add to get the number in the middle, because you get these two terms, 4 and 6. I end up adding those. That gives me back the 10x. And I want to multiply to get that number on the end, because I end up doing 6 times 4. That gives me 24. That's why this will work every time. You don't have to do guess and check. If you can fit both those requirements, you're good. All right, so let's try another one. So for this one, this would be multiply a times c would be 1 times 6. So i got to find factors of 6. Two numbers multiply, give me 6. Same two numbers would add to get me the number in the middle, which is 5. Can you think of two numbers? If you multiplied them, you'd get 6, but if you added them, you'd get 5. What, if I did 1 times 5, that would be, that's so funny. They said that last period, too. What do you think? Three and two. Three and two. It's, it's, it's always so tricky. So 2 times 3 is 6. 2 plus 3 is 5. So the two factors, one would be x plus 2, one would be x plus 3. And it doesn't matter which one comes first or second. I could put the x plus 3 first and the x plus 2 second. That's the same thing. And if you guys ever get tripped up, sometimes what I do... Like if I want to multiply to get 6, like I might just off to the side or something, write down the possible things that would multiply to give me 6. So just so I know my options. So the only two things would be 1 times 6 or 2 times 3. And sometimes that might help you a little bit um, to get which, which combination to use if you're not sure. So 24 has a bunch of options. 6 just has a couple, but that just might help you to get the correct combination if you get stuck. Okay, now let me switch this up. Now, everything in example three is of the format. You're going to have one term in the second term. The B value is going to be negative. The C value is going to be positive. If this is the case, it's minus and then a plus. This always has to be a situation where both factors are going to be negative. Because you're going to multiply to get a positive number, but you're going to add to get a negative number. So the only way that can happen is if they're both negative. So sometimes you might have to think about these for a second. But same process, okay? I'm going to multiply a times c here. It's just 1 times the constant, which is 33. Now, for this one, i got to add to get negative 14. So can you think of two numbers? If you could multiply them, it would be positive 33, but you add them, you get negative 14. Yes, okay. Negative 11 times negative 3 gives you positive 33. Negative 11 plus negative 3 gives you negative 14. You do not have to write that out. I'm just trying to show this in case anybody's looking at this that's not here today. Now, when you write these factors, the only difference is you just use a minus sign. So one of them's x minus 11, the other factor x minus 3. Again, it doesn't matter which one comes first or which one comes second. All right, let's slide to this one. Can we think a times c would be 1 times 12? So I'm going to multiply to get 12, and I need these two numbers to add to give me negative 7. Negative 4, negative 3. So one is x minus 4, the other is x minus 3. It does not matter which one comes first or second. All right, and I got one more. And a multiply to get positive 81 and add to get negative 18. Negative 9, negative 9. Okay, so x minus 9, x minus 9. Is there any other way I can write that? X minus 9 times the same square. Yes, okay, if they're both the same, this can we can just squish them together and just write it as x minus 9 squared because I'm just multiplying it by itself. Only can do that if they're exactly the same. <clears throat> Is anybody having a question? Okay, now. The ones that can be the trickiest are the ones that I have on the back here. And it's going to tell you that A is 1 for all of these today. But it's going to say C is less than 0. That just means C is negative. That's what that means. So if the last term, if your constant term is negative, and it doesn't matter if the B value is positive or negative, if your constant term is negative, the only way that can happen is if one factor is positive and one is negative. I just spelled the word one wrong, okay. <laughs> if 
expired. Okay, so one factor has to be positive, one, half, one factor has to be negative, because I gotta multiply to get that number on the end, which is negative. So these can be kind of tricky to get the combination that's gonna work properly, but there's only one set of numbers that will fit both of these requirements. Okay, so a times c, I'm multiplying a times c. For this one, it'd be one times negative 28. And I wanna to add to get the b value in the middle there, which is three. Can you think of two numbers when you multiply them? It would give you negative 28 add to three? Seven, negative four. Okay, it has to be seven and negative four. That multiplies to give you negative 28, but if you add like seven plus a negative four or seven minus four, that gives you the positive three. It can't go the other way around. Now, when you write the factors, one should be x plus seven, one should be x minus four. It doesn't matter the order they come in, but it does matter, like the plus has to go with the seven and the minus has to go with the four. Okay. Now, with this last one here, I gotta multiply a times c is just my one times negative 30 here. So I'm gonna multiply to get negative 30. Same two numbers, I gotta add the b value there is just negative in front of the x, so just negative one. Perfect, okay, it's gotta be x minus six, x plus five. And again, you can switch the order, like the x plus five can come first, the x minus six can come second, but the six has to have the minus, the five has to have the plus. If you check that real quick, negative six times five, that's negative 30, negative six plus five, that gives you back the negative one. So you're just checking that to make sure it fits both of those requirements. Is anybody having a question? Okay. Now, we hadn't had this on any of the problems that we've just been working on, but in example five, I have just a couple more quadratic trinomials. So I've got three terms quadratic because it's x squared. And I've got three x squared minus 12 x plus nine. Any idea what I should do first here? Do you notice anything? We can, but I want to do something really quick before that. Yes, okay. If this, and we haven't had this on any problem. Um, if you have a greatest common factor, which I'm going to write GCF, factor out greatest common factor first. If all the terms have something in common, these in this situation, it's just a number. Those are all divisible by three. Do that first, or the method I was telling you, how to multiply AC, add to B, that will not work if you have a greatest common factor. So all these guys are divisible by three. Now, if we were working with an equation, which we are not, we could just get rid of the three. If we are factoring, we have to do kind of what we did in that first example where that three comes out in front. Okay, now, left over, I'd have x squared minus 4x plus 3. And then what's in the parentheses there, <coughs> excuse me, that is more like what we were just doing on the front. So then just leave that, just kind of ignore that 3 in the parentheses for a second. We need that to have the factored form correct. But I'm really just going to focus on can I factor this any further. So can I think here, a times c would just be 1 times 3. Two numbers, if I would multiply them, I'd get three. The same two numbers I would add, and it would give me negative four. Okay, so if I do four times negative one, is that going to give me three? No, no, you're fine, you're fine. These are tricky. It ha yeah, the, the only factors of three are just one and three. So if I got to get positive three, add to negative four, we're just going to make it negative one times negative three will give you positive three. Negative one plus negative three gives you the four. These are always really tricky. So the factored form here, I do need that greatest common factor that's got to be out in front. Otherwise, I'm not factoring and giving you an equivalent expression. But the two factors, one would be an x minus one, and the other would be and x minus 3. So if we completely foiled that whole thing back out, it would give us the original problem. We're just trying to put it in factor form. Now, <clears throat> like I said, if we had an equation, we could just get rid of the 3 and not worry about it. 
but if you have an expression, you can't just get rid of something because there's no way to cancel it out. So we have to have that three out in front. Okay, what are you going to take out in front in the next problem? Yeah, make sure you take out a negative two. You want that first term to be positive. Okay, so if I took out negative two, what would you have left? Good deal. X squared plus 4x minus 21. Okay, now we're just we're going to leave that negative 2, and I'm just going to set up my factors. They'll both start with x, because x times x would foil back to give you the x squared. Now, to fill those in, I just got to think two numbers, if I multiply them, they'd give me negative 21. Same two numbers, they would add to give me that number in the middle, which is 4. Can you, yeah. There you go. One's a plus 7. One's a minus 3. 7 times negative 3 would give you negative 21. 7 plus a negative 3 would give you 4. All right. Is anybody having a question? All right. The very last thing we're going to do here real quick is called the difference of squares. And you can actually use the method we've been talking about today um, where it multiplies to give you but A times C adds to give you B. What's going to happen on each one of these questions, though, <clears throat> the B value would be zero in this situation. So if you want to use that, you can. The other way you can do this, I'm just going to give you a little formula here. And when I have the A squared minus B squared, it's not like the A and the B in your standard form. And I'm not trying to confuse you. This is just how this formula is presented. So if my first term is squared, my second term is squared, and I could take the square root of those. The factored form is going to look like this, a plus b times a minus b. And basically the deal is a would be the square root of the first term, and b would just be the square root, oh, I'm off the screen, sorry, and b would be the square root of the second term. So you can do this if you know your perfect squares pretty well. Otherwise, I can ask you in a different way. So... Let's just, let's try the first one here. You guys know square root of 25? 5. Okay, so factored form here. This would just, one would be a plus 5, one would be a minus 5. Now, if I asked you this kind of how we were doing the last couple of questions, I would say, okay, tell me two numbers that multiply to give you negative 25, but add up to 0. 5 and negative 5, they have to be opposites. If you FOIL this back out, this only works if you have subtraction between the terms. If you FOIL this back out, you get x squared, you get minus 5x. Then, because these one's a plus and one's a minus, you turn around and you get plus 5x. So those two middle terms get wiped out. And then the 5 times the negative 5 is the negative 25. But you need one of each to cancel out that middle term. So that's why it's only going to work with subtraction there. But it's really just the square root of each of the terms, if you know that, or... Like I said, I would tell you what multiplies to give me negative 25 and adds up to zero. That's another way you can do it. So, do you guys know? Go ahead. Will there always be different signs? Yes, they have to be. They have to be. One of each. Otherwise, the middle term wouldn't cancel out. Good question. All right. Can anybody tell me what the 11? So, just one of them is a plus 11, one's a minus 11. It doesn't matter which one comes first, which one comes second. Okay, now the next one, you're probably like, uh, Miss Grota is 6 and 54, neither one of those have a nice square root, and you'd be totally correct. Uh, what would you maybe do first on that next question? Yes, these two terms both are divisible by 6, so anytime you have a greatest common factor, try to take that out in front first. So if I take 6 out, what would we have left over? Excellent. And then I'm like, hmm, can we think of two numbers that when I multiply them, I get negative 9, but when I add them, I get 0? Three and, and it's just the square root. So one's a plus 3 and one's a minus 3. And again, if you want to FOIL it back out to check, it should give you the original problem. But we're just trying to get it in factored form. They're giving us the expression in standard form. <coughs> okay. Now I have... This, the next two are just a little bit weird. I want to do 
um, kind of what I recommended to you guys on the front. If they don't present you the question in standard form, I'm just going to rewrite this real quick in standard form. So the biggest power of my variable is the x squared there. It's negative, so I'm just going to rewrite this. And it was 4 minus that, but the 4 doesn't have a negative in front of it, so really it would be a plus. Okay, now looking at those two terms, you're like, mm, they don't have anything in common, right? They don't have a number in common. They don't have a variable in common. But here's what I would tell you to do. Anytime you're trying to factor, you want that very first term to be positive. So if it's not, like this has a little negative in front of it. What I would just recommend real quick, I'm just going to pull a negative 1 out in front of that. What that does is that makes that first term positive. And so if I pull a negative out in front, and you can put the 1 or just a negative symbol either way, that would turn this into positive x squared, and then it would turn this positive 4 into a negative 4. So it didn't really look like it when I started the problem, but really this is actually a difference of squares. So can we think of numbers that multiply to get negative 4 that add up to 0? Yeah. Two and okay, everyone was quiet for a second. I know, it's, <laughs> we're just tired today. Okay, x plus 2, x minus 2. Done. All right, now, I would tell you to do the same thing on the problem right next to this. So I would rewrite that real quick. Negative 3x squared. That 48 doesn't have a negative in front of it or anything, so when I rewrite it, that would be a positive value. Now, neither one of these are perfect squares. As I look at that, and I also start out with a negative. So what I would recommend here, I'm going to pull out a negative 3. Both of those numbers are going to be divisible by 3. When you do that, left over, you're going to have x squared. If you take 48 divided by negative 3, that makes it negative 16. And it didn't look like it, but this is a difference of squares. So this would be negative 3. You guys know square root of 16? 4. So this would just be one of them's an x minus 4, one of them's an x plus 4. It doesn't matter which one comes first or which one comes second. Does anybody have a question? I got one more, and then I will be quiet and let you guys practice these. This is not like any of the ones we've done so far, because I do have a number in front of the x squared here. Anybody have any idea how you would factor that? Yeah. Totally, un yeah, I know you're thinking the right thing, but not quite, not quite. What were you thinking? Yes, if you can, like, I, this one's a little tricky, and this doesn't fit any of the rules I've been telling you at all. Um, it, other than the, the definition up here, it's the square root of the first term and the square root of the second term. Both of these guys are perfect squares. The square root of 49 is 7, square root of x squared is x. So both of these would start with 7x. 7x times 7x would give you back the 49. And then 100, the square root of 100 is 10. So one of these is a plus 10, one's a minus 10. 10 times 10 would give you back the 100, or it would be negative 100. The middle term would cancel out. So that's really tricky, but you're looking for a perfect square there. <coughs> so you can take the square root of that first term, the square root of that second term. Okay, is anybody having a question? Okay, and you guys have your, your new... Uh,